Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in my last video, I showed you what a nightmare of a hotel room looked like feng shui wise. It was so bad that on that trip in Beijing, I actually had to check out of it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the good feng shui hotel that I checked into right after it. So in this video, you're not only gonna see that room, but you're also gonna get all the tips so that you yourself can become a little feng shui master and learn how to identify a good hotel room that will give you good chi and ensure you have the best day possible on your next business trip or pleasure holiday. Now, if you have any questions about feng shui or any experiences you wanna share, please drop them in the comments below and don't forget to like this video now. Let's get into it. Previously, dude, what is going on here? There's like that edge and that edge. Some more crazy sex lighting, very weird. Feels like a brothel, which definitely is not good feng shui. You definitely do not want to have any exposed bathroom stuff. This is a sacrilege. I'm checking out, guys. It just has really bad feng shui. Okay guys, so now that we've seen what a spooky bad feng shui hotel room looks like at the Chow, I've now checked into the Kerry, which I love and is really solid. Kerry Hotel is part of the Shangri-La Hotel group and you just know where you're getting. So first of all, these corridors, for example, yeah, they're dimmer, but you can see where you're going. Unlike these new boutique newfangled hotels. This is so confusing. Look at here, this is another blade. I mean, this is just like not warm and cozy at all. It's so bizarre. So let's check out my room. I'm room 1225, which is like Christmas day, which is great. Gotta warn the spirits ahead of time. Okay, and let's check it out. All right, so. First of all, whereas the Chow Hotel was a triangular building, so every side is like a blade, Kerry Hotel is rectangular, but most importantly, you can see all of the rooms are very feng feng zheng zheng. In Chinese, that's uh, square and rectangular. Let's check this out. I love how this area is, you know, there's like a delineation of the entryway by marble, and then over there, that's carpet. And there's tons of storage which every girl needs. Um, and the storage area is really separate to the living and sleeping area. And there is a mirror, of course, but the mirror is not facing onto the bed and it's not facing onto the window. It is facing right back onto a wall. Let's check this out. Okay, so important to have a closed, an enclosed bathroom so that your chi does not, you know, wash away or drain away into one of the sinks or the bath or the toilet. And also you have more privacy. So over here, okay, yes, we have shower, we have bath, it is enclosed. And then we have, you know, also very square, very like, you know, small and compact. Oh, and this is one of my favorites. Yes, one of these Japanese style things. This has nothing to do with feng shui, I just like it. Oh, and that feels very zen. Okay, so this is how a bathroom should be as opposed to half open onto your bed, which is just an awful, awful feng shui. Thing. This is a sacrilege. I mean, what's going on over here? A place where you sleep should be a place of rest. It should not have these weird off bath things. Now, let us check out my Feng Feng Zheng Zheng room, which yes means square. Feng means square, Zheng means square. Yeah, you'll see it's actually, you know, there's very good sunlight coming in. The walls are light gray with some wood, very comfortable. Now, one thing in feng shui, which is very important, is that we say we do not like to have artwork that has people. We don't like artwork in the house, especially in the bedroom, that has ren wu. Ren means people, wu means like animals. So really safe is like abstract. Chou xiang is, you know, abstract, that's safe. Plants, you know, flowers are safe. So let us check check out what the artwork is like over here. Okay, some kind of bamboo action going on. Very zen, very safe. And then over here, these are like two calligraphy style brush strokes. Again, very zen, very simple, very abstract. If you have an artwork with, I remember I once bought an artwork that had like a lot of little people in it. I think were probably like 30, 40 people in it. And my feng shui master came in and said, and looked at it and said, Zhao xiao ren. And I was like, what does that mean? So xiao ren means little people. And little people means you're attracting the energy of people who are not good for you into your home. I was so frightened I immediately. So bad. Anyway, so that's the artwork. Now let's check out some other things. Remember at Chow, there was no headboard, which in from feng shui perspective is really not 
good for your neck or your head when you sleep well. Over here, we have a headboard that's, you know, built into the wall, but this material is great because it's like firm but soft. So very nice. I definitely sleep well every single time I'm here. And oh, remember at Chow Hotel, there were all these sharp corners and blades that were shooting out at me, you know, in no matter what direction. Well, let's take a look at what the corners are like over here at the carry. Okay, so here's the table and look at that, a rounded corner. Let's check out the bedside table. Also a nice rounded corner. Let's check out this side table rounded corner. Oh, this is totally round and even the sofa is kind of round. So even the, the lights are nice. They don't jut out at you. No, they're very, very sunken in. And even these wooden sideboards also rounded, right? As opposed to like jutting out at me. Now there is one thing that I'm not a huge fan of in this room and it's this hanging light that's over the bed. Let's check it out. So this is the hanging light over the bed. If you have that in your room, whatever body part that this light covers means that it creates pressure on you and you'll have ailments in that part of your body. So luckily at least this is really goes down to like the middle of the bed and by the feet. So it's not that bad, but still. Another thing is that, you know, I like light switches that you can see, you know, work really well. Chow Hotel, which had these light switches that I couldn't even find. And then the light was so dim. I mean, it's just really not great. Another thing is that with electronics, right? You can see this little electronic wall over here. Well, electronics actually drain your chi, drain your energy, especially when you sleep. And at night is a lot of the time when we're charging stuff. And as you can see, it mine even emits this little blue light, which is really not good. But the cool thing is that you can close it up and your wires can still, you know, slip out. Electricity area is a separate area. So brilliant. And then finally, let us check out the view. Okay, so not as open as the Chow Hotel, but it's actually a really good view. You can see a little street. That is the CCTV tower, which was an architectural, you know, pretty brilliant architectural development. It's open enough where, you know, there's nothing blocking me directly. So that's okay. All right, guys, so now I've taught you the secret sauce to making sure you have a good feng shui hotel room, which ensures that your next business trip is the most deal-making, money-making business trip ever, or your next pleasure holiday is relaxing and goes really smoothly. Remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for the next one. And ooh, I opened a TikTok channel, guys. That's right, it is called at Sarah Jane Hope. So make sure you check it out and drop me a comment below about some good feng shui hotels you've stayed in and some hotels you've stayed in that maybe just didn't give you a good vibe. All right, see you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be posting a new video each week who have tips and tricks that I think will help all of us lead a better life.